Hey there, John Morris here, johnmorrisonline.com. This lesson, we're going to go through the, the basic class syntax. So I'm going to show you how to create a class, how to create a property within that class, how to create a method, how to instantiate an instance of that class, and then how to call a method from our newly created object. So this is going to give you the full gamut of kind of the concepts that we talked about and show you how to actually use them here uh, in PHP so that you can kind of start to 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 build upon this sort of framework. So this is a framework that we're going to then build upon throughout the rest of the class. So creating a class is actually really pretty simple. You just need the class keyword. So that is class. And then you need to name your class. So let's do something like my class. Now you can name your class anything. Um, but the, the, the sort of standard for how you name it is to use camel case so capital m capital c that's not required it's not going to throw some sort of error or anything like that that just is tends to be the convention uh, among php developers of course do what you want always but uh, if you're looking for what the t sort of standard is that's what it is so once we have the class keyword then we have the name of our class and all we need is an opening curly bracket and then a close of course a closing curly bracket and that is essentially our class. Everything else that we're going to do outside of instantiating it is going to happen inside of here. So when we talk about creating a blueprint, this is where you're creating your blueprint inside of. And it's going to be uh, what it's going to be is a collection of properties and methods. So the way to maybe relate this to procedural code is in procedural code, a lot of times you might uh, create a config file and in that config file you have constants and then throughout the rest of your your code your function or you might create uh, global variables you might create variables in the global uh, namespace meaning outside of a function designation and then inside functions you might globalize use the global keyword and then uh, use those variables that were created outside the function inside the function well, this is a similar type idea in the sense that properties are kind of like, uh, they're, they're kind of like constants for your class. You create a property at the top outside of your functions or they're like, they're more like global variables. You create a, a, a variable outside of your function calls at the top of your class and then you can use those variables inside of your functions without having to globalize them. So in a way, a class is really just kind of a namespace. It's a way of it's something that you can wrap all of your functions and your properties inside of. And they really only sort of work inside of that particular namespace. And you could use a, you could use the same variable name outside of the class and the two wouldn't conflict. Now, there's some caveats and exceptions to that stuff, and we'll go through that. But just in a general sense, that's kind of what this is. Now, again... We talked about what object-oriented programming actually is and the idea behind it and the fact that you could write and put all your stuff inside a class and still not really be doing object-oriented programming. We'll, again, we'll dive into that some more as we go along, but I want to give you this base, these base sort of concepts and syntax. So once we've created our class, now we can create our variables and our method. So to create a variable is pretty straightforward. You just you use the the uh, you use this identifier here. Now we'll talk about in a little bit these were public, private, protected. We'll talk about these the and how that affects scope and usage and so forth. But uh, for now, we'll just stick with public, and then you just use the syntax var equals. I like oop. It's just like creating a variable in a sense. So. It's pretty straightforward and that that is a class property. So again, nothing too crazy about that. Now to create a method, again, we'll use the public uh, keyword here and then you create your function. And then of course you're going to do your function name. So we'll just do my function and we'll do our opening curly brackets. So again, this is just like a regular function designation that you would write. We just add this keyword public to, to the beginning of it. And don't really worry about that too much because it's, I'll explain what it means, but it's not that complicated or big of a thing. Okay, there's some 
just some different scenarios where you might use one or the other, but it's not anything that's overly complex and going to be difficult to understand. So we we'll create the name of our function, and then inside of this, we're going to do something. So here we'll just do echo, and we'll use the this keyword, and then we're going to uh, echo var. Okay, so let me explain this. Whenever you are inside your class like this, you can use this this keyword right here, or you have to use this this variable. There, when when you create a class, this this basically becomes available, and you can use it to call either properties within your class or functions. So we could do it wouldn't make sense inside of here, but we could do my function like that to call our function. Okay, so the way you reference properties and methods inside a class is using this, using this this variable and then uh, this pointer and then the name of the variable or the property or the function or the method. So, and just in case it's not clear, inside of a class, variables are called properties and uh, functions are called methods. So if I interchange those two, <laughs> forgive me a little bit on that, but that's the that's the basic idea. So again, you can reference those using this this uh, variable here, and so that's and and that's what we do here in order to reference our variable uh, up here. Now the one caveat to this is we'll talk about uh, class constants and so forth and static functions and so forth here in a little bit and a few lessons ahead, but. This only works when this gets instantiated as an instance of an object. Now, in most cases, that's not going to matter um, because that's what you're going to do anyway. But if you are creating a static function, you can't use the this inside of it because no object was instantiated when you use a, uh, a static function. Again, we'll get into that more in a little bit, but that's just, I want to start you thinking about that uh, a little bit now. So again, we're rec. So what this function should actually do, if we call this function, it should echo out, I like oop. That's ultimately what this sh should do. So now to instantiate a new instance of this, what we're going to do is we're going to do my class equals new my class. So this is instantiating an instance of our class. Remember, the class is the blueprint. This is the actual thing that we're creating. This is the object. So my class, this variable is an object. This is, you know, if this is the blueprint for the house, this is the house. So now we have our house inside of our variable my class, and we can call, we can reference any of the properties, any of the methods, and build Whatever's available inside of our blueprint, our class, we can build that using this new object. Okay, so now what we can do is we can do echo. Well, actually, we don't even have to do that. We can do my class and my function and simply call that like that. And when we come over to our page here, you can see we get I like oop. Okay, so that's the whole idea here. And what this, again, what this allows us to do, just creating a class is not, I mean, technically it is, but it's not really in the spirit of, necessarily in the spirit of object-oriented programming, okay? But what it does is it gives us the, the basis, the foundation upon which we can now start engaging in object-oriented programming, and we can create individual, uh, uh, individual classes to to uh, handle individual functionality and that's really the whole point of this is that for any sort of thing that you want to do in your application that is you know more than just maybe one function you want to start to think about putting it inside of a class and having that class handle everything so for example if you look at a cms you will have in a CMS, you'll need to create an edit, update, delete posts, right? Well, that you should have one class that essentially handles all of that. It's your post sort of class. And it does everything that needs to be done for that particular object. 
So it's going to allow you to create it. It's going to do all the interaction with the database that needs to happen with your database class that needs to happen in order to insert it into the database. It's going to do all the interaction that you need to pull stuff from the database, uh, up st update stuff in the database, delete stuff in the database, and anything else that you might want to do that you think belongs in that. So now you have that all self-contained in one class, and all you have to do instead of rewriting that code every time every time you want to get a post from from the database instead of having to rewrite all of the database code that's necessary to do that you've created instead a function or a method inside of your class that does all of that and maybe all you need to do in order let's just say this were that you pass in the post id and so let's say this is a, a get function it's a reading function you pass in the post ID and it does all of the connection connecting to the database, getting that ID from the database, you know, pulling that data, putting it into something that you can work with, whether an object or an array in PHP, and then returning that to you. So now here you could be like post equals my function. And now on post, you would have access to, let's say, you know, echo post title, echo post content etc you would have access to all of the data inside of that and then maybe there's helper functions that you have inside of that class that allow you to I don't know maybe you want to echo post and you're gonna do format and uh, post date or something like that okay so and and maybe you would just you know, maybe you would have it to where when you call post date, it's already formatted. You, of course, could do that. But the idea is that you can create methods that are helpers or that will allow you to uh, do something related to that object that you might want to do. So the whole idea, again, is is not just to know how to create a class, but how to take it and then for the objects that that you have in your application and the things that you want those objects be to be able to do, you general the general rule of thumb is that you're going to create a class for each one of those that's going to handle all of the stuff that you need to do now that again and i want don't want to get too confusing here but that's that's a secondary layer that 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 those classes would sit on top of a a, a more foundational layer which would be your database class so if you've seen any stuff i've done with database classes you know, those those classes have function, they have basic interact database interaction functions. So you don't have to write all the queries. You can just call methods from inside the database class. So your post class wouldn't be querying the database directly. It would be calling methods from your database class. And so that's how you that's how you layer an application. If you look at, say, for example, WordPress, they have a WordPress database class. The only thing that database class does is interact with the database. So there's a few methods like get results, get row, query, uh, update, delete, etc. that are methods that you call and you don't run the queries. You just pass in data. You pass in information that it asks, that the, the, the methods require, the parameters, and it does all of the database stuff for you, connecting, running the queries, returning the results. It handles all of that. So that's a base level class. But on top of that, they have a query class. And that query class is how they query for posts and pages and categories and so forth. So the database class is a foundational class. That's a base level class that interacts with the database directly. Query is a class that doesn't ever interact with the database. All it ever interacts with is the WordPress database class. So again, that's how you layer, that's how you use classes to layer an application. And that's the thing I want you to start thinking about is how can I start taking all of this code that I have that may be all sort of intertwined between the queries and the front end views that I'm displaying and the database, it's all sort of mixed together. How can I start pulling it apart to create individual classes that do individual things? I have one class that interacts with the database. Every other class sits on top of that any class that wants to interact with my database has to go through my database class and so then i have 
you know, maybe a query class or a post class. And then, you know, maybe I have a views class that sits on top of that and et cetera. And we could talk about some more of that stuff, but I just wanted to get your mind thinking, uh, in, in that direction. So again, being able to do what we've done here is the foundation of all of that. So that is a really, really, uh, kind of straightforward, simple way of how to create a class, how to create a property, how to create a method, instantiating an instance of the class and then calling a method from that class. So hopefully you got something out of that. We'll obviously continue to build on this as we go through uh, the rest of these lessons. I'll see you in the next videos.